Hey friends, Sleepy here and welcome to a brand new episode in my community question series. We're actually on episode 9. I just want to thank everyone who has been participating in my question series. You guys are amazing and I really do appreciate it. I have really enjoyed reading all of your guys' wonderful comments answering the question. And I also want to give a big shout out to everyone who has been taking the time to film video responses answering those questions because I have enjoyed watching your guys' uh, videos. It's been a blast. I just want to remind everybody that I will be holding a contest at the end of this series and you get entries into that contest by answering the questions whether you do it as a comment or a video response. Now if you decide to do both, you answer the question as a comment and do a video response answering the question, you'll actually get two entries per video. So you can get up to two entries in that into the contest. I again want to let everybody know that if you do film a video response, please leave a link as a comment on that video so that I can check out your video and so other people can check it out as well because I don't always get informed when people upload on YouTube. It just has to do with the stupid YouTube algorithm. They don't always inform everybody. And I would hate to miss your video and not give you guys credit for it. So please do leave a link uh, to your video so I can check it out because I do appreciate that. Again, too, you guys can go back at any time. If you missed an episode, you know, don't worry. You can go back. As long as the contest hasn't concluded, you guys can go back and answer any of the previous questions. I actually have eight uh, questions I asked before this video. And if you guys haven't answered them, feel free. You can go back and uh answer those questions. I do have a playlist created where you can see all the questions that I've asked already. So you guys can go back anytime you want. Don't worry about that. And you go back and then you can still answer the question and you'll still get credit in that. So for today's question here for episode number nine, I want to know what your guys' thoughts are on DLC. Do you guys like to buy DLC for your video games? You know, expansion packs, stuff like that. You know, do you guys enjoy buying that stuff? You know, so the question is, you know, do you like buying DLC for your video games and what is your thoughts and opinions on that? Now, I know there are some people who just absolutely hate DLC. They don't even want to buy it. They don't touch it with a 10-foot pole. They don't want to spend any extra money other than what they paid initially to buy their copy of the game. And I can completely understand that. There are some DLC stuff I don't like. But overall, you know, I have always been a fan of DLC. Now on the PC, you know, they was really big with selling like expansion packs to, ga to video games and stuff, adding tracks and cars or adding a new campaign to a game, you know, it was pretty big on the PC and I bought a lot of stuff like on that. But as far as console goes, uh, there was not a whole lot of DLC around for video games for consoles. Now one of the first games that I ever got, and actually is the first game that I ever got DLC for, is for the original Xbox, and that was for Mech Assault, which this was an amazing game, still amazing today, of course you can't play it online, um, but it still was a wonderful uh, mech game, and it was one of the first games that had DLC, and it talked about, because it even had a little um, logo here, and it says, Get Xbox Live and download free mechs, maps, and more. And so that was really mind-blowing at the time. Like, wow, I can actually add to a game that I've already bought and have, and you can get new stuff in it. And so this, you were able to download mechs, but you're also able to download new maps to battle on, which I thought was awesome, and it was really cool at the time. Now, it was the first uh, couple waves of stuff they released for Mech Assault was free. However, they started to eventually charge for you so much money you know to download and buy the extra packs they had for the games because you know they found it as a way that they could make money to enhance the game and I was completely fine with um, buying stuff just because you know you're helping to pay for a developers time going back to add to a game that they've already completed now I'm totally against uh, companies and games that pull the old the content was already on the disc, but they locked it away under a paywall. Now, I don't appreciate that. And one way you can definitely tell that is, is look at the size of the download, especially for modern games. You know, you buy an Xbox One game, and then there's a big expansion pack that comes out for it. If you look to download, and it's like a two, three, or four, or five gig game, you know, download, that's definitely was created after the game was uh, released, pressed on the disc, and you're actually downloading real content. And if you look at some games will do, you'll see it's like a 10 megabyte download 
there's no way that big expansion pack was there. It means it was already on the disc. And what they did is they just unlocked the code for you to access it. So I definitely don't like that practice of having DLC hidden on the disc under a paywall. That's not the kind of DLC I like. I like DLC that actually enhances the game and isn't on the disc itself. If it's on their disc itself, it should be available day one with your purchase. It shouldn't be hidden behind a paywall. So that's one of the DLCs I don't like. But a regular DLC that is not on the disc and enhances the game is something I do enjoy. And I have a few other um, examples of this. Like I was used to be big into playing Halo 1. Obviously Halo 1 wasn't on Xbox Live, but LAN parties and stuff were just amazing getting together with friends and a whole bunch of people hooking up TVs and stuff and playing. But Halo 2 was on uh, Xbox Live, and that was something I used to play back in the day. I'm not into the competitive multiplayer anymore. I'm not really into that. But when I was younger, I was. And so one of the things they released was this Halo 2 multiplayer map pack. So you got all nine new maps plus some bonus features. And, of course, you needed Xbox Live again for it. But it was really cool to have physical DLC because that's another thing I really love is Whenever I can get physical DLC for my consoles, I will buy them because it's a way for me to preserve it. Because you can always go back and re-download the content as long as it's available on Xbox Live. But when the markets and stuff shut down, like you can't download Halo 2 content anymore because it's been shut down. Now, of course, there's archive websites and stuff that you can go on to and download stuff. But there's no way from Microsoft to download old content. So if you don't have it already on your hard drive on your Xbox you're pretty much out of luck getting that DLC. And there's some stuff for like Splinter Cell and things like that that came on those official Xbox Magazine demo discs and they had some DLC on there and you added new levels and stuff. So that was something I really enjoyed adding to the games. You know, that was cool. This one adding a whole bunch of new maps to play. So I have that. Then you get into like 360 genre. You know, that's when games really started adding more content. Because I mean, there was stuff for... The original Xbox, but it wasn't until you get to the seventh generation that they really started to pump out the DLC and content for games, and that's what I really enjoy. But again, like I said, I like buying games later on that have the DLC all in it, like the complete con uh, collections. Like I recently got, you know, the Bioshock Infinite Complete Edition here, and it has Clash in the Clouds, Barrow at Sea, and then another Barrow at Sea Episode 2, and it actually has a physical bonus disc that has a DLC on it. I love collections like this because I always have access to that uh, extra DLC and you know you get it for a great price so I do like that. Another one I got here that I got actually I think this is last year I got the Dishonored Game of the Year edition and this includes four different uh, DLCs and it also has a had also had a cool poster in there but that's another one you know enhances the game which I like DLC that continues like the story and stuff those are some of my favorite uh dlcs in games is i love that you know like you beat the main story but then you have expansions that keep the story going or maybe there's a side character in the game that you now get to play as and go through their story or sometimes they have uh prequel stuff like you know here's a little campaign that takes place before the main story and gives you some backstory and character so i've always liked dlc that has done that and so that was another one uh, here's a physical one for a Fallout 3, just a little add-up pack. This one just had Broken Steel and Point Lookout. This is like a couple dollars. It was really cheap. But I like having, you know, the, the physical DLC for this because eventually, you know, the Xbox 360 servers are going to shut down and you will not be able to re-download. I'm not saying it's going to happen today or tomorrow, but 10 years from now, 15 years from now, you know, I'll still be wanting to play my Xbox 360. And let's say, you know, I lost the uh, the DLC. I can't re-download them because Xbox Live shut down for the 360. I can always pop this disc in and re-download that content if I want to revisit again. So I do like having those physical DLC stuff. Another one here we have, and this is actually one game that has been delisted. This content's already been delisted, and that's why this copy has become expensive, is Marvel Ultimate Alliance. But this was the gold edition, so on the disc itself, it has eight new playable characters. So you had the Incredible Hulk, Venom, Cyclops, Magneto, and more. And then you also got some costume packs and stuff. Well, that DLC got delisted because of some controversy and some rights issues or something that they had. And it got pulled from the marketplace and you could have never download it again if you didn't already buy it. And I don't even know if you can actually <laughs> download it if they completely took away from people who already download it. Sometimes they do that, sometimes they don't. But either way, 
you know, this was your only way to get the complete version of this game now was to have the physical copy of it. And so I'm glad I have it. So that's another example there. And then the last ones I'm going to share here is like uh, Mafia 2, which I have just beat this last year. I bought this Platinum Hits version because it had all the extra DLC. And so this has three additional story packs and four style packs. So it got you different outfits, different cars, and then you have three different stories that complement the main story, which is something I really love. So I really do enjoy games when they add on content to that. Now there's also, you know, quite occasionally you'll have like pre-order bonus content stuff you can download. They'll add a cool character skin or something like that. You know, I've always liked when they add something neat to that, like you'll know, play Spider-Man or something and you'll get like a retro Spider-Man suit or a or an alternate Spider-Man outfit. You know, I do like things like that. Now, there are some games <laughs> that just go a little ridiculous when it comes to DLC, and that's like the Dynasty War games, which I love them. But I look at one of them, I think they must have had at least 100 different DLC things you could buy. It was basically just like, oh, you can unlock Dynasty War 1 skins, or Dynasty War 2, or 7, or Extreme Legends skins, or you can unlock this voice pack, or you can unlock this look and that look. You know, weapon skins, stuff like that. There's some of the stuff... You know, I, I like, but I'm not going to spend all that money on it. Like a little cosmetic thing I don't really care about. For me personally, it doesn't really enhance the game that much that I actually need it. But I know there are some people who love that. But that's some stuff I'm not a big fan of. Of Just basic, like, you know, oh, well, here's a blue Master Chief and here's a red Master Chief. Like, you know, unless it's something I really would want, I tend to stay away from those kind of DLCs. Now, I do enjoy, too, for, like, um, racing games. I know my buddy Dean likes that stuff. Like, you know, you could download new cars or new tracks, and, and you know, it keeps the game fresh, and you have new tracks to race on. Because they do eventually, you know, you get kind of tired of the same tracks or racing as the um, same car. So I do enjoy that they do have the ability to enhance the game by adding new cars to it, you know, get new licenses going and getting, you're able to download a new car to race as and new packs. So I do love stuff like that. I also do enjoy that, uh, games now do season passes where it pretty much gives you all the DLCs as a one flat rate cheaper than if you were to buy them individually. But then they give that person the option, you know, maybe I don't want all 40 DLCs for this game. I only want two or three. And so I do like that. They give you that option. Not all of Companies do this, and not all games do this. But I do like when they give you that opportunity. Like, oh, I can buy, I can buy the season pass and get access to all the DLC. Or, you know, I only want one, maybe one or two of those car packs. You know, I don't need all that other stuff because it just doesn't interest me. And so you can pick and choose with the money. Another wonderful thing I uh, like is they all. There's a lot of sales if you, you know, you take the time. You can find great deals. Like I've had an amazing sale on. Far Cry 4 Season Pass, normally whatever is like 40 or 50 or whatever bucks. You know, they sometimes have these sales on there like 80 or 90% off, and you can get all the DLC for dirt cheap. Same thing happened for um, Home Come, Home, Homefront, The Revolution. I got the digital complete edition that has all the DLC and expansion packs for $6 because it was 85% uh, percent off. So that was an amazing deal to get all that extra content in the game on sale. So, you know, always pay attention to Microsoft and Sony's and even Nintendo on their marketplaces because you can find great deals. The publishers will have a specials and stuff because they want to get you to buy this content. So they put it on sale. Another one I got a great deal was um, Batman Arkham Knight. I was able to get all the DLCs for like 90% off last year and I got it for dirt cheap. I got all the extra stuff. I got all the new Batman skins. I got new challenge maps. I got new characters to play as. And it just was really cool having all that content. It also added some story stuff to it. So for me personally, I really do love DLC, but there are a few things I don't like. You know, I don't like when they hide stuff behind paywalls. Another thing I really don't like, I don't like loot boxes and random unlocking stuff. I mean, I know it's really popular. People get that high and get excited by you never know what you're going to find randomly. But I would rather, you know, like if I want this specific car... I want that specific car. I don't want to have to use real money to buy a token in a game to pull basically like a slot machine and hope that I get that car that I want. You know, I don't like stuff like that. I also don't enjoy uh, microtransactions that they have in game where 
they purposely hold you back like for people who play multiplayer because like, of course i'm not big into it but you know they purposely hold you back on earning stuff unless you spend real money and you're like oh well you need this gold iron to level up your character so you have to buy it with real money if you earn it in game you know they, they it's purposely slower to get you to spend money on it. So I don't support that. I never, I'll never buy it. One of my favorite games on the Xbox One, which is actually my favorite Lord of the Rings game, is Middle Earth Shadow of War. Now, when that game first launched, they had a loot box type of system to unlock stuff in the game, unlock orcs and stuff like that, which you could earn real, you could earn it through playing the game, but you could spend real money buying it. And people threw a fit bitched a lot and they actually got rid of that aspect to the game which i enjoyed it just showed you know if you don't like something you know stand up for yourself and you vote with your wallet and just don't support it like i don't like microtransactions i don't buy it and don't give them my money and that's how i boycott their stuff by not buying it in the first place you know just hey i don't want to buy it. other people want to buy it more power to them but I don't enjoy it, so I won't. And I vote with my wallet and say, no, I'm not buying your microtransaction loot box shit. Because I don't believe in it, so I don't support it. But I will support developers who make wonderful story content. Like, you know, Mafia 2 here, where they're adding new story. You know, you get to play through, like, here's one, The Betrayal of Jimmy, Jimmy's Vendetta, and Joe's Adventure. So, so you get to play as different characters that, that go along with the main story, and it's separate from the main characters you get to play different characters and get their perspective and stuff and so i r completely enjoy stuff like that it's the same thing with like my action rpg games when like they add new content to it you know like oh hey they added some a new class and they added a whole new area to explore you know i love dlc like that like for me it really enhances the game and it always makes me want to end up getting the complete editions of games because you get the full experience. So I have always enjoyed DLC that enhances the game. You know, you get new cars, you get new map packs, you get new tracks to race on, you get new story and stuff. That's the kind of stuff I'm into. You know, the cosmetic stuff like, oh, you know, this is my gun. Now it's pink or now it's blue. That I don't really care about. I know some people are really big into it and they like having those different skins and stuff. Personally, I don't really care for them. I also don't like loot boxes and stuff, so I never buy it. But I'd like to know your guys' thoughts on here. You know, do you guys like DLC? Do you like buying it? Do you add it to your games? Maybe you're someone who doesn't ever buy it. You know, you just refuse to spend the money on it. Or maybe you you like buying it. Maybe you like the loot boxes and you like that uh, feeling you get when you're not sure what you're going to unlock with the randomness of that kind of stuff. I don't like it, but maybe you do. So I would love to know your guys' answer to the question. What's your guys' thoughts on DLC? Do you like it? Do you not like it? You guys can answer that uh, question as a comment. You can also answer it as a video response if you want. And you can do both and you'll get two entries into the contest. I just ask if you guys do film a video response, let me know about it by leaving a link to your video as a comment. Just say, you know, like, here's my video response and have the link to it. And I will make sure to check it out. And I'll make sure that your uh, comment stays there and it doesn't get flagged. Because sometimes, you know... YouTube will flag the thing and say it's spam. I'll make sure that it isn't and that you people can uh, check it out. I want to thank you guys for watching. Take care. You have a wonderful day and sleep. And we'll see you next time.